What is up guys? Welcome back to the vlog here. My name is Lex. We're playing at Seminole Hard Rock, our home casino here in South Florida. Today, playing 510. The game looks pretty good. Not that many professionals in the game, so it looks pretty profitable. Let's get into the first hand here. We are in the hijack position. We raise it up to $35 with ace, six of clubs. It folds to the big blind who makes the call. The flop comes out queen, three, deuce with two clubs. When he checks it over to us, we put out a C bet of $30 here. The big blind pretty quickly makes the call for $30, going here to the turn. When we bet the flop, we're trying to get value from weaker flush draws and also put pressure on hands like pocket 7s, pocket 8s, and pocket 9s that can't really withstand too much pressure. The turn card is the ace of diamonds. We make top pair now. Now we can go into value betting mode. When our opponent checks to us, we put in a $100 bet, and he pretty much snap calls. With $335 in the middle, we see a river of seven of spades. Now the big blind leads right out for $100. We just snap call here. Can't fold for this sizing, and we're definitely not going to raise with our six kicker. He shows ace five. We show ace six. It looks like our six is going to play on this board, so we end up taking down our first pot of the night here. We get into a pretty fun hand here with pocket threes. The hijack opens to $35. We are on the button and we make the call. The small blind and the big blind fold. So we're going heads up here to a flop. We see a board of king, queen, three. We flop bottom set here on a pretty wet and connected board. The hijack player bets $25. Given this sizing, I think we can raise sometimes. Other times we can just call. So this time we decide to call. Going here to the turn, which is the nine of spades. Brings in the obvious draw, which is jack 10, which was open-ended on the flop. My opponent continues to bet here. He bets $75. Now we're going to raise for value, trying to get value from all two pair hands, sets, over pairs, and flush draws. So we raise it up to $235. The hijack player thinks for a little bit of time and decides to call $235. So now I'm putting him on a hand like king jack, king 10, or possibly ace king. I think if he had a flush draw on the flop, I think he'd bet a lot bigger. If he had a straight on the turn, I think he would repot me maybe up to six or $700. So feeling pretty good about my hand here, looking for a clean river card so we can continue to put money in this pot. The dealer puts out the ace of hearts for the river, which is a pretty interesting card here. If he had a hand like ace king, now he river top two pair, which is great for us. If he had the ace high flush draw with like ace jack of clubs, ace 10 of clubs, or ace five of clubs, now he made top pair. But if he has a hand like King Jack, King 10, or even King Queen, he has to be a little bit worried here that we could have a higher two pair or we could have a straight. I now go into the tank trying to figure out what bet sizing I should use. I end up settling on a bet of $525 into a pot of $590, trying to cooler hands like Ace King, King Queen, and Ace Queen for two pair. If he has a hand like Ace Five or Ace Ten of Clubs at River Top Pair, I think he'll call me off as well. He may even call me here with a hand like King Jack or King 10, figuring that I don't have anything, given the fact that the ace is better for his range than it is for mine, so it's more likely I could be bluffing here. The hijack player thinks for about a minute and puts in the call. We show pocket threes for bottom set. He looks back at his cards and puts him in the muck, which means we are taking down this pot. So running pretty good here to start off, flopping a set and getting paid off on the river. Our stack is now up to about $3,500. Moving on to the next hand here, we have 8-7 of spades. Under the gun race, is $240. A recreational player in the hijack calls. We call in the cutoff and the big blind call. So going four ways to a flop. The board is 5-6-9, all hearts. So we flop the nut straight here. However, we are four ways and there's three hearts on the board. So we have to tread a little bit carefully here. It checks to the hijack player who puts in a bet of $100. We raise it up right away. We make it $300. I don't even know how much she has in her stack. I thought she had about $500, but... After looking when I raised, looks like she has about $1,000 in her stack. So we make it $300 and the rest of the players fold and now the action's back on her. I played with this player a couple times and she's pretty passive. She likes to call a lot. She doesn't do much betting herself. So when she bets into all these people, I raise her and she eventually makes a call for $300. I put her on a medium flush hand like pocket fives or pocket sixes. She would never bet on the flop with a hand like ace jack with the ace of hearts as a semi bluff. She would also never bet king queen with the king of hearts as a semi bluff. So I'm putting her on two pair sets, medium flushes, and sometimes hands like pocket jacks or pocket queens with a heart, but that's a little unlikely. I actually think she might hero fold that on the flop. With over $700 in the middle, we go to a turn card, which pairs the board, five of clubs, which is not a good card for us. As I said on the flop, when she bets into all these people and then calls my raise out of position, I put her on mostly two pairs or sets. So now all those hands got there and became a full house. 
Looking at her stack, she has about $800 remaining, which is around a pot size bet. So I guess I could bet half pot around $400, or I could just put her all in here. But I really think that she has a strong hand. I think she has a flush or possibly turn to full house. So I go with my gut here. I end up thinking for a while and decide I'm going to check this one back and evaluate on the river. If she bets out huge on the river, I could probably just fold given the fact that she would never be bluffing in this situation. As if the turn card wasn't bad enough, how about another 5 on the river? Now there's 3 fives on the board. Any pair makes a full house now, so she has pocket queens or pocket jacks. She's now beating us. If she has a 6 or a 9, she beats us. Pocket 6s, pocket 9s beats us, and even a flush beats us. She thinks for about 10 seconds and ends up putting out a bet of $200, so a pretty small bet here. We can't call. We end up showing her our cards and eventually folding, hoping she'll tell us what she had. She eventually tells us she had pocket 6s, so she flopped a set. Turned a boat, so it looks like we lost the minimum here. Flopping a straight versus a set. Mad right out. You had the boat. Uh, I was worried about that. Nice hand. Next hand here, we have ace 10 of diamonds in middle position. Under the gun race is 230. This hand plays better as a three bet or fold for middle position, so we decide to bump it up. We make it $100. The small blind cold calls $100, and the initial rates are fold, so not exactly what we were expecting, but either way, we're still heads up here in position with ace 10 going to the flop. We flop a flush draw on queen 6 8 with two diamonds. My opponent checks to us. We put out a C bet of $80 and he check calls. The turn card is the 3 of diamonds. So we make the nut flush right away, the best hand possible. Small blind checks to us. We put out a bet of $200. Now he goes into the tank. He thinks for about 45 seconds and calls $200. Going here to the river which is a total brick off suit 7. He checks it over to us and I want to bet big here trying to get hero called by all pairs all queens and possibly some lower flushes so i bet 650 he snap calls me beats me into the pot i show the ace i flush to win and he mucks his cards unfortunately in this next hand i'm not able to get live camera footage because my phone was charging and all the stations at the table were not working so we're going to use footage from another vlog here we have pocket nines in middle position there's a button straddle small blind raises it to 60 dollars we call and the button call so going three ways to the flop the dealer puts out a board of 10-7-3 with two diamonds, so we flop second pair here. The initial razor bets $75, and given the fact that he's betting one-third pot, I don't think I can fold just yet, so I make the call and the button calls. The turn card is the king of clubs, so now two over cards to our pair of nines. The initial razor checks, which is kind of interesting. I decide to check here, not going to turn my pocket nines into a bluff, and the button snap checks behind, so going here to the river... The river card is a pretty dreamy for us. It's the nine of spades. So we end up making a set here on the river and the initial raiser decides to bet. He bets out $150. So now we have to decide how much should we raise. I think for about 20 seconds and raise it up to $650. The button ends up folding and now the action's back on the small blind. He goes into the tank. Basically, I want him to think that I'm trying to steal the pot here. Given the fact that he bet the flop and checked the turn, his range is pretty capped here. The best hand he could possibly have would be like ace king or king queen. And he decided to pot control check on the turn. Now he's going for value on the river. My opponent is a good thinking player, so he realizes that his range is capped and mine is not. So I could be trying to bet here, trying to get him off a of one pair of hand, given the fact that he checked the turn. So I'm hoping that this will level him into making a call. Maybe he thinks that I'm just trying to steal the pot. After about 45 seconds of tanking, my opponent puts in the call. He calls $650. I show the pocket nines and he says, yep, that's one of the hands that makes sense. He later tells me he called me with a 10, so he called me down pretty light. So definitely happy with this line. Got lucky there on the river and ended up getting paid off. We are running good so far. Our stack is continuously growing. We are flopping some sets, rivering some sets, making some big hands and getting paid off each time. We're also losing the minimum when we are behind. So things are going pretty good so far. All right, guys, I am out here. I have two huge, massive pots for you guys. So the first one here, under the gun, raises to $35. We look down at jack 10 of diamonds on the button. We decide to three bet it up to $125. It folds to the small blind, who makes the fold, and the big blind puts in a cold four bet. He makes it $335. So folds back to me. I have to decide, do I want to call or fold? I end up looking at his stack and the big blind has about $2,500 total. So we started the hand with around 250 big blinds. So I have to call $210 to win potentially $5,000. So I make the call for $210. All right, going to a flop in a four bet pot with around $700 in the middle with jack 10 of diamonds. The flop comes out 10, seven, 10. 
flopping trips here, running like God this session, and the big blind continues to bet. He bets $190 here, so he down bets, and I have to decide now, should I raise or should I just call? The reasons for just calling would be to keep his bluffs in there like ace-king and ace-queen that he might bet again on the turn, and reasons for raising is to bloat this pot early before any scare cards come out. Let's say an ace or a king comes out and he has queens, he might get scared and not put any more money in the pot. So. I decide to raise, I raise it up to $600. The big blind tanks for about 15 to 20 seconds and makes a call for $600. So we're looking for a good turn card. The turn, however, is not very good for us. It's excellent for us. It's another 10. So we're making quads here in a four bet pot with about $2,000 in the middle. I mean, can you get any better than this? I don't think so. So my opponent checks. I decide to check this one back. Put in the trap a little bit here. The river is a six. Now the big blind looks at me, looks down at a stack, and decides it's all going in there. He shoves all in for $1,300. We snap call. We show the jack 10 for quads. He looks pretty frustrated and mucks his hand, so we end up taking down a $5,000 pot here, and I have video. All right, next hand here, guys. We're playing four-handed here. There's a button straddle for $25. Small blind folds, and the big blind raises it to 75. I look down at pocket eights here, and I make the call for 75, and the button makes the call. So going three ways to the flop. Flop comes down four, four, deuce with two clubs. So we flop an over pair here. Pretty good flop for our hand. The big blind continues to bet. He C bets for $135. I make a pretty standard call here, and the straddler on the button calls as well. So going here to the turn, just like last hand, we're looking for a good turn, but unfortunately it does not come good for us. It comes great for us. It's another eight. So we end up turning a full of house here. Eight's full of fours. I mean, just running like fire, guys. What, what can I say? And the big blind continues to bet. He bets $425. So this is just a dream spot here. He always has queens, kings, or aces most likely. Now, unlike the last hand where I decided to raise, I'm just going to call here on the flop. I want the button to come in with either a pair like pocket nines or pocket tens or maybe the button has a flush draw and he feels priced in and wants to call so i just call 425 dollars here with my full house and the button thinks for about 20 seconds and folds so going here to the river which is the king of diamonds now the big blind just snap checks it over to me this is a pretty bad card honestly if he has queens or jacks or tens he's probably going to not pay us off here on the river but he could have a hand like ace king of clubs or king queen of clubs that he double barrowed a flush draw now he hit top pair and he wants to check put in a little pot control here so i have to decide how big should i bet should i bet kind of small like four or five hundred dollars trying to get a crying call out of queens jacks or tens or should i bet big and polarize my sizing to either a full house or a missed flush draw so i end up looking at his stack he has about fifteen hundred dollars remaining so i decide I'm going to go big here with my full house. I bet $2,000 to put him all in. Now the big blind goes into the tank. He thinks for a while. He's looking at the board, studying his hand, looking back at the board, looking over at me, looking at his chips. He thinks for about a minute here and decides on a call. So we show the pocket eights for a full house to scoop this pot. He flashes red pocket aces. So we definitely got lucky there to win another $5,000 pot. I don't think it can get much better than that, guys. We have almost a $10,000 stack now. After stacking two opponents there, running good so far with a couple more hands left in our session. We're playing for another hour or so, and then we're going to call it a night. Moving on here, we have queen, four of clubs in the big blind. Another gun plus two races to 30. We make the call. We see a flop of king, king, four with no clubs on it. My opponent bets $20, and we check call here with our four. The turn comes out in offsuit 8. I check it to my opponent and he snap checks back. So going to the river, which is another 8. So now we get counterfeit here. All we have is queen high. We check it over to our opponent here and under the gun plus 2. He decides he's going to bet and he bets $200. This is an interesting spot here. I can assume that if he bet the flop with trips, he would continue to bet on the turn. The turn is a total brick, an 8, and given the fact that he checked back the turn and now he's over betting the river, when it double pairs, I actually think he could have gotten counterfeit himself. Maybe he has a hand like 7s or 6s. Now he only has 7 or 6 high and trying to get me off a higher card like ace high or queen high. 
On some occasions, he could have a hand like pocket tens or pocket jacks, and he decided to check back the turn, kind of afraid that I might have a king, but given the fact that I checked again on the river, he feels like he can go for a thin value, so he's betting here pretty big, trying to get hero called by any pair if he had pocket jacks or pocket queens. So after thinking for some time, I don't think he would ever check back a king on the turn. So given that, I think I'm going to turn my hand into a bluff. I'm not going to call here with queen high, but I could potentially get him to fold ace high or a hand like queens, jacks, or tens. So I put in a raise here to $525, and I want you guys to see how he reacts. He thinks for less than a second and snap calls. We show queen high. He shows king nine for a full house to scoop this pot. Looks like we bluffed at the wrong time there. Whoops. Just one orbit later here, under the gun plus two, same player as last time raises it up to $35. We call in the big blind with six eight of diamonds and the small blind call. So going three ways to a flop of ace, nine, ten with two diamonds, we flop a straight flush draw here. Under the gun plus two bets $40. Small blind thinks for some time and folds. Now the action's back on us. We have a straight flush draw. Any seven or any diamond gives us a huge hand. I decide with my big draw here, I'm going to put in a semi-bluff. I end up check raising it to $150. I can have two pairs and sets on this board, and my opponent really can't have as many as me. I can have all the 9-10s, the ace-9, ace-10s, pocket 10s, and pocket 9s. So I want to put pressure on his one pair of hands and his gut shots. So I raise it up here to $150. He thinks for a little bit of time and makes the call. So we're going here to the turn. The turn card is the four of diamonds, giving us a flush right away. You guys really didn't think I was going to miss this session, right? I'm just running way too hot, so I decide I'm going to bet big here. I put in a bet of $375, trying to get called by all of his ace X with a diamond hands, or possibly two pairs. He must not have had anything at all. He ends up snap folding, so we take down another pot here, turning to flush. I have never had this many chips in front of me, guys. Look at all those blacks. Three stacks of over 2K. We have over $10,000 in our stack now, going into the last hand of the night. We raise it up to $35 in middle position with ace-king offsuit. The cutoff calls and the small blind calls going here three ways to the flop of ace-king five rainbow. Flopping top two pair. Small blind checks to me. I put in a small continuation bet here. I bet $30 trying to get called here by any king, smaller pair, gut shots, or weaker aces. Both my opponents make the call for $30, so going here to the turn. The dealer puts out the jack of hearts on the turn, which gives a heart flush draw now. It's a pretty good card for us. Someone could have a hand like ace jack or king jack that could give him two pair, but queen 10 also made a straight, and given the fact that we bet so small on the flop, that is definitely something our opponents could have. We continue to bet here when the small blind checks to us. We put out a $115. Cutoff looks back at her hand, and she decides she's going to come along with us here. She's going to make the call as well. The last card is the Deuce of Hearts here, bringing the backdoor flush draw. Not the best card, because we don't have the King of Hearts, and the King of Hearts is not on the board, which means our opponent could have King X of Hearts and went runner runner flush on us. However, we're not going to check here. We're going to try to get value from weaker aces or weaker two pairs. I don't think she has a straight, because she would raise us on the turn. Knowing that my opponent will never be bluffing here, if she does put in a raise, I can pretty confidently fold my two pair. However, it doesn't come to that. She puts four green chips in her one hand and four in the other and puts in the call. We show ace-king for a top two pair. She taps the table and mucks. We scoop in our last pot here at 510. End up shortly racking up here, heading to the cage for a record cash out. shit guys what a session what a run we were just running like the sun running like god basically never lost a hand the entire session flopping sets turning sets rivering sets making quads making nut flushes just winning all the pots getting paid off cooler in our opponents just the best run of my life for sure we were in the game for twenty five hundred dollars never added on ended up cashing out for a record high eleven thousand and forty bucks that's a profit of $8,560 at a 510 game. So in a little over four hours, I made $8,000 playing poker. Just crazy. Can't believe it. If you told me that three years ago, I definitely would not believe it. But I'm glad I was able to film and show you guys back home. Pretty amazing session here. Well, that is it for this one, guys. I'm going to go relax and celebrate this win. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below. Helps out the channel, helps it grow. All right, until next time, guys, I'll see you.